Forget about the Boston Tea Party. It's going to be a what? What? Hmm. I don't know if we're live. It says zero, so I assume that we're not. What? No, we are. Look, it says zero. Now it says seven. I don't know what's going on. So are we live? Yeah, man. We've been live for a good uh, 15 seconds now. I don't understand what's going on. But it doesn't look like it, right? Am I the only one seeing that screen? Nope. You're oh, it's no just going to be me sitting here looking like an idiot for 15 seconds. That is correct. Awesome. Hello, Whiskey Entitled. In case you actually made it through that 15 seconds and didn't abandon this live stream, which I almost did myself. Uh, welcome to another episode of Whiskey Untitled. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite thing to talk about. The tariffs on Scotch whiskey, specifically single malt and maybe Irish whiskey. And we'll talk about where they came from, why they're here, how long they're sticking around, why they're sticking around. And why this... American Whiskey of the Year isn't worth $150. Seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds. 15 seconds is literally the amount of time it takes for me to abandon this channel. Because I'm like, if I'm watching this, tomorrow morning I'll do it. I'll, I'll watch this like I'm going to watch it. And I'm going to be like, nah, I'm out. I'm not watching this anymore. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll see how that goes but yeah so guys thank you so much for uh joining us on uh our second christian episode gregor dram for all at least have whiskey what's up yeah dram dude hi i see you see us there you go but yeah thanks guys so much um Tolf. you're driving tashi what's up don't watch us man tashi drive safe please listen, please drive safe. listen to us how about that right. please drive safe but yeah um thank you guys so much um last week me, Wally, and the Whiskey and Title channel sent out a blast to you guys to ask for uh, what questions or what would you guys like to be answered over at the Whiskey and Title. And um, that is today's topic. So um, basically right there on the bottom. I don't know why I showed it, but there it goes. But yeah, so since it's a whiskey show, Wally, what is in your glass? And I'm assuming that's what you're showing us. Yeah, you're not going to tell us? Garrison Brothers? Really? This is Garrison Brothers. The, the last part of this word, Balmaria, yeah, what's that weirds me out because it looks like diarrhea. <laughs> and I didn't look up what it means because it looks like oh, diarrhea. Fair enough. Um, so it's just Balmaria, uh, Texas straight bourbon whiskey. It is 57.5% alcohol, born and bred in high Texas. The interesting thing is the types of barrels. Okay. Uh, straight bourbon whiskey aged for four years in New American White Oak Barrels and then transferred to second New American White Oak Barrels for another year. Okay. Uh, I saw it in the store, and somebody else had recommended this to me, a bourbon person, okay. and was like, you got to try this. It's like the best bourbon I ever had. <laughs> and is that, uh, is that how you sound like? Got... Yeah, that's how I imagine. It's Instagram, so I yeah. give everybody a voice. This is the voice of the person who recommended this. Yeah. You got to try this Balmaria. Not because it rhymes with diarrhea or bowel movements and diarrhea together, but you got to try this Balmaria because it is viscous and delicious. Tastes amazing. So the notes, if you go to like a total wine where they were selling this, the notes were like candy floss and this and blah blah blah. And I was like, these people have good. obviously never had no shot. single grain whiskey because this doesn't taste like any of that. It tastes like black tea leaves. It tastes like toffee. Okay. And that's about the extent of it. So for a hundred and fifty dollars for a five year, Ooh. I feel gypped. I I would feel gypped too. One hundred fifty bucks. But don't get me wrong. The distiller was like, hey, enjoy that. But if I had to pick between this Balmaria yep. and the Brugeria coming out of Balconis, which is also Texas, yep. cherry cask, the Brugeria is bombing, and this just bombed. Ouch. All right, so not a buy-in. 150 bucks, that probably saves you guys a lot of money, too. So The Brugeria is 100 bucks. I mean, that's just a better deal. So in my glass, I have um, – so there's an Instagrammer called Jake Lee. Um, he was on a live stream – I think no. He, uh, someone was talking about his whiskey on a live stream, and I didn't know Hawaii actually had uh, uh, a distillery. So um, I asked if they had any bottles that they could send over. He was kind enough to send a 350, uh, 750 <laughs> milliliters. Uh, and um, it's 61 percent. It's uh, finished in extra rum cast, so you can really taste the rum funk, which is interesting. 75 mm -hmm. percent corn and 25 percent rye. So I do get a rye spice. I uh, get some sweetness, but I thought the sweetness comes more from the rum than anything. So. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, that's to be expected. Um, Christian, I agree with you. Uh, this is my first Garrison Brothers bottle. I'm not buying another. No offense to them, but like, I mean, if their if their standard edition is anything like this, I'm not interested. And Balcones, 
I mean, they've impressed me from the beginning. I have three yeah, of their bottles. The blue corn was really, really good. Yeah, the blue corn's good. Yeah. Their regular single malt was really good. And then the uh, the Brugeria, the, the cherry cast, awesome. So it's just, it's really good. But this, this Balmaria just, it just lost me. I mean, I'm going to finish this glass because I'm not a heathen, yeah. but. Is it, it was not a drain pour, but it's definitely not a buy. It's not, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, if you told me this was a two-year bourbon and it was 50 bucks, I'd be like, okay, this is, I mean, this is decent for 50 bucks. But when you tell me it's $150, I'm like. Wait, so is Christian, get, Christian's had this bottle before and he gets fish oil on the nose? Mm-hmm. Damn. Do you get fish oil on the nose? I'm not a big fan of fish oil. No, I get black tea. I get like a like ton of black, black tea. tea, like a second cup of black tea, or like the first black tea, because the first cup of black tea. No, no, no. This is like second batch black tea. Been sitting in your glass. Weird. Now it's cold, like warm, like room temperature, not iced tea. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, mm, I mean, it's here. It's in a glass. I'm gonna drink it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Um, any bottles hope- this week? Did you get besides that one? I mean, that was it. That's okay. the only bottle. I mean, I spent. Yeah, I almost picked up a seven year Kayo sherry cask. The Japanese tag Japanese. said fifty. Yeah, the tag said fifty-five bucks. But it, it's a seven-year. But when I got to the register, it was one hundred and fifty dollars, and I was like, "You should." Mm, I always, bring, I'm all right. I would take a picture of the tag and be like, "Hey, this is what you guys pasted." That. I did that, and the guy was like, "That's for a different bottle." And I was like, "All right, well, this was in the wrong place, then." Yeah. Whatever. Still, awesome whiskey company. They did a bourbon finish at PX. That sounds good. That does sound it good. Depends like how strong is that PX? Is bourbon's? I have to. I have to admit, bourbon's hard to overpower when it's at cast strength too. So. Yeah, no, I added water to this last night trying it, and it still was. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no bottles for me this week. Uh, I think both of us are trying to um, save a bit of money for some special bottles. I am <laughs> waiting for Larceny's uh, Barrel Proof to come out. I've got one on Same. Board. I've seen people posting it, and I'm so too. mad. I'm, I'm not surprised that Oregon didn't get it earlier, but I'm surprised it's not even on the website, which is usually. I'm surprised I haven't seen it, and I've been looking for it. So. Got that on reserve, but there's nothing really I'm watching for so far, and it could be because of the tariffs. So, uh, you want to jump into it? Let's dig into the topic. Right. So, just to level set with everyone, if no one, if you're new to this or you're trying to understand this, below is a uh, explanation of what a tariff actually is. So, Holy piss! What are we an educational channel? Yeah, that, that, that's what happens, man. Uh, I'm not gonna read Gross. it because people talk to me about talking about Wikipedia all the time and shit like that. So. F you guys. Uh, so <laughs> there you go with a tariff on the bottom there. Um, right. Larceny barrel proof? Yeah, it was like Dramfall, the larceny tra- barrel proof or just the regular larceny? A regular larceny I like yeah. too, but if it's barrel proof, I'm I'm super jelly. Yeah, I got it on reserve. Greg, I talk to my local liquor store. I'm just waiting for them to get it. He'll call me when it comes in, but. That's what happens <laughs> on mine too. Um, so let's go. Let's, let's, let's rewind, right? In October 18, that's when the tariff set. Um, it was a big battle debate between Airbus and Boeing and the airline industry and so on, um, where U.S. was um, was it basically saying that the EU were giving unfair practices over to Airbus, which then dropped down what Boeing was getting, so there was an uneven playing field and so on, right? Um, later on, the WTO was a- was uh, was in favor of the U.S which then U.S. slapped a $7.5 billion tariff among a bunch of stuff from the EU. So the U.K., um, Italy, France, and some other larger nations. Maybe Spain? It was, Spain. It was like random stuff, though. Yeah. It wasn't like they, and it was, they didn't tariff so, everything. They tariff random stuff like prosciutto and yeah, Parmesan so Reggiano. Basically, what the U.S. were trying to do is trying to recoup that seven point eight or $7.5 billion worth on other things that the EU were getting. They're trying to get some money, right? So, <clears throat> yeah. But, yeah, we're not trying to get into politics here. We're not saying who's who's worse, who's better, whatever, like that. No, nah, I mean, this isn't really... Like, it, the whiskey part, part, of it, part of it is politics, but at the same time, like, this was from something that happened in 2004, yeah. and it's just now coming to fruition. This is a lot of nonsense that's just happening in the world, yeah. like, on a political level, but in reality, I don't know how much it actually relates yeah. to politics more than just, like, grandstanding that people yeah. are trying to do now. The yeah, country's no, like, trying to just... You gotta think about this. And I was, well, I was in contest. In 2018, the EU slapped sanctions on American whiskey too. So it's like this is a thing that does correct, happen, right? Yeah. Um, I've read reports where 22, I think it's 22 percent, um, of imports got smacked from the U.S., which then closed some smaller distilleries down, or distilleries in in fact didn't even export anymore. They just started focusing on the U.S. market. Um, That's so crazy. 
the same thing is probably going to happen with um, how the EU is going to – or more Scotland, oh. Ireland, right? Because they're the ones getting targeted by this and then French wines yeah. and so on. But um, if you guys want to really dive into it, um, it's a, it, it says overall 25% tax on its Irish whiskey or single malt Irish whiskey. I'm trying to write, uh, read yeah. it right off the bat. Um, where is it? Subheader. Irish and Scotch whiskeys provided by the subheading and – here, if you guys want to get into the, the nitty gritty, the subheading is two two zero eight dot thirty dot thirty. That's what you see the what the tariff is for that specific product. So if it does change over time, then you'll be able to look that up if you want to. So uh, what Jaron Fall was saying, he uh, Georgia got the Larceny Barrel Proof a week oh, ago. Know. That's awesome. Tolve, I do want to. So the reason I want to get one of the new Larceny Proofs is I want to do a side by side with the previous releases they had, the distillery releases. Um, and single barrel releases that I ended up getting grabbing two bottles of because I want to know how different they are. Uh, bigger topic is the motive on the tariffs, yeah. but yeah, no, the motive on the tariffs, like we were saying with the airport, with like the airline yeah, industry. Yeah. But now with it affecting weird things like French wine, it makes me wonder what else is going on because like Costco is the number one importer of French wine. How's yeah. it going to affect them? Um, Southern Michigan got, of course, everybody got it, yeah. but friggin' Maryland. Uh, Scotland's no longer part of the EU, but the problem matter, is though. inside of the tariffs, yeah. it literally it's- singles out. Scotch whiskey, and, and it singles out Irish whiskey. It singles like, out a country, too. So it's, it singles out the UK. So it doesn't just say the EU in general. Right. It says UK, France, Italy. It's. I mean, it'd be nice countries. if it just got thrown out all of a sudden because it's at the yeah. EU. That'd be sick. And funny thing enough is that the trade um, organization for the EU, uh, for the UK and the US actually met uh, on the 9th to, since the EU is, um, the UK is not part of the EU anymore, they broke down what the definition is of Scotch a whiskey, single malt whiskey, um, Irish. Do they whiskey. still have to? Cause, yeah, because so it's now a brand new charter where it pushes towards now it's UK, not the EU. So they have to Correct. re-license the names and say they're going to follow the rules. The e, um, the UK also did, said the same thing about bourbon, Tennessee whiskey. They uh, realize what the definition is of those. So yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's the EU or not. It's still as whole as a whole. And they did single out Irish whiskeys and sing, Scotch single malt whiskeys. Just mm-hmm. dumb. And like, but yeah, so if any of you guys, I wish Whiskey Throttle was on here because, like, I know he's got more of a libertarian mindset and we don't believe in tariffs at all because it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Just let the free trade be the free trade and it doesn't relate to politics and just, like, leave it alone. And that, that's a hard part, and, right? Like, I understand the I whole, mean, it's not. what's the reason why people have tariffs because people play unfair. It doesn't matter what country or whatever, people play unfair uh, and they're trying to level the playing field. Um, but it doesn't level it, it just makes things worse because then they just implement more tariffs you know, and everybody's... Are, some people tariffs are the worst because like they're you're just, spending money but the problem with tariffs is like you're spending money you're getting nothing yeah and so like literally two orders that i had that i was going to order from the whiskey exchange yeah. i just canceled my orders because as soon as i got to check out it was like 85 dollars or a hundred dollars mm. or on one order that i was looking at 880 dollars like it just didn't make any sense and what am i getting for that nothing so um a nice a good question that Dranfall has um he basically notes that uh didn't Scottish just really state that they're going to eat the cost of tariffs. So some. So and that's a, so when I was trying to dive into that, it was mostly co- larger companies like Diageo that have their own importer in the U.S. So they own their own importer. They're eating yeah. that cost because they can because they're ones because they stuff. they own that. That's yeah. their money. Now it's a smaller ones like um. Kilcoman. Yeah, like smaller distilleries that they don't have an import. They have to work with an importer in the U.S. Um, most of them are based in New York. Um, so those are the ones that are going to hit because they're a smaller company. They're going to, from what I've heard, either... You know what's funny is Kilcoman said they will eat the cost the first year between them and the distributor. And all I could think was their bottles are already $100, $125. Yeah, yeah they should eat the cost. For six-year Ilo whiskey, you're spending $125. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I've had one Kilcoman that I like, so it's not. I'm just not bashing yeah. a, a peated whiskey company, but at the same time, it's like uh, you're charging a hundred. It's like this: hundred and fifty dollars for a, a five-year American whiskey doesn't make any sense. One hundred and fifty dollars for a seven-year Japanese whiskey to me doesn't make any sense. Stinking. Someone has to make. It's a exactly. Though, man. Someone has to make money, right? I get that, like, but like, give me value too, or fake it. Fake the value. I don't care. Well, that's what a lot of brands do, right? It, like, I'm. I, this is gonna be offensive to a lot of people, and I'm. I don't care, but I'm okay with it. Okay. I get what I'm getting into when I bought this for two hundred and thirty dollars. Yes. But like thirty dollars more, I literally could have bought Mac eighteen, and if Mac eighteen was as good as Mac eighteen was was five years ago, yeah. I would have bought Mac eighteen. But I know what I'm getting with this. I understand that I'm supporting all of Campbelltown because they're doing it all locally. Yeah. It's totally legit. Sell me a story. Show me that there's value in me spending $230 on an 18-year-old whiskey. Well, and, and I'll still buy it. 
see, so that that's when marketing comes into play, right? So correct. Show me the value. But I, I feel as though that we as the market, yeah, for all. we as the market are going to dictate the value. Like if, like I, it's sad to say, but we put McAllen where they are. Everyone loved yeah, the McAllen problem, that, Everyone and that's loved the problem McAllen is the market is loved it, loved so it. stupid. Because like, look at McAllen right now. Yeah. Like twenty five percent tariffs, will they even care? Their stuff is already twenty five percent overpriced. They're, they're they're eating that cost, <laughs> right? From what I've heard, like, so in Oregon anyway, um, I reached out to my local stores and asked them, hey, what happened? You know, because so the Oregon is a uh, control state. Um, yeah. The state basically controls all the pricing and stuff like that. I asked them what prices went up because they said on uh, in October that February second's kind of the time when they're going to change all the pricing. So I was like, all right, what's going to happen? Um, he actually messaged me back and said like, Hey, it was, it was McAllen, a lag of Olin, um, Oban, and then like Bailey's uh, Irish cream were like the only <laughs> McAllen, Diageo, really up- Diageo and Bailey's. Yeah. Like they were the only ones that really went up in price more like around that 20%. Everything else is a couple dollars. So for me, that's great. Cause I'm not a big McAllen drinker, so I'm not going to be affected there, but I can see a bunch of people being like, I want my, I love my lag of Olin. Why can't I get that? I think it's going to push a lot of the yeah. secondary whiskey market that McAllen has created out because so, like I said, so every, right. No, but that's the thing is like, everybody knows I want a McAllen leak number six for my 40th birthday. Yeah. And thank you to every one of you who has given me to direct websites that will get it to me without charging me $880 for the tariff. Yeah. Holy piss. I am ready to jump on one deal. I'm trying to get the master mall deal first. Cause 2,100 bucks is too hard to pass up. Yeah. And if I can't get that worked out, believe me, uh, Dram for all. Thank you so much for your link. I will be hopping on that because 3,100 bucks is still better than I went to total wine the other day and they have it for $6,000 on the shelf. I'm not spending $6,000. It's $3,000. Good. I think they import their it's own not six. Yeah. Well, they're spending a poop ton of money to make it super expensive for no, no apparent reason. But like for those of us who just want to drink McAllen, yeah. That doesn't make any sense because I'm not spending 880 extra for nothing. And then for people who want to flip McAllen, this is going to be a giant deterrent. How many people can get on the auctions now and then go spend, say, a thousand bucks on a bottle they really want in McAllen gas strength and then spend $250, not including shipping or auction fees or everything else that gets added up? Like all of a sudden, a a bottle that should have been a thousand bucks is now 1400 bucks for the person's pocket. People will stop doing it, people will stop buying it. I, or the prices will come down. <laughs> I don't think prices will come down, and I don't think people will stop. They have if, to. If there's, if there's still a market, if, and I think there still is. People you think there's still that much money that people want to spend on that? Oh, hell yeah. It'd be like, hey, I paid. Some people just like the, the fact that they paid more. People, Yes, yeah, some people like to be able to say. Look, even how much for, this bottle is and so on. So that's on. like Land Rover. Like You buy a Land Rover that costs 120 yeah. breaks down every other week, yeah. and it's like, I paid $120,000 for this. Like, okay, good for you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's nuts. Like, I personally don't like how the tariffs are handled. Like, if I go through the list, it's so weird. It's like cashmere sweaters, men's and boys socks. Like, it makes no sense. Blankets, braided blankets, bed linen. I'm like, why? Why are these multiple things? Yeah, are we really buying that much from the EU? We're their largest trade partner. We're buying it from China. No, but we're their largest <laughs> trade partner, right? So, like, China doesn't accept a lot of stuff. So. Which is the other? Oh, for market. the whiskey, we are we're thirty percent of their market of single malt Scotch whiskey. So that, and I think that's what it is. It's to hurt. It's, it's hit that pain point, just like it hurt our industry as well, right? It hurt the bourbon industry in two thousand eighteen. Correct. What Gregor just said is yeah. literally my biggest fear. I that, that's been in the back of my mind the entire oh, time won't go down. because because the prices won't come down even though the tariffs get removed. Yeah. Now companies are just putting twenty five percent more gravy in their pocket, yeah. and it's like, and that's um, we have to vote with our pockets. Yeah. Well, like if we don't vote with our wallets, we're not voting at all. That's so, the problem. So, so if we don't stop buying, they're gonna keep selling. Yeah. So like a lot of people that are watching this, we drink on a, a, a semi regular basis. So we do have our favorites. If our favorites are scotch, even the, if it's a ten dollar price point, twenty dollar price hike, we're still gonna buy them. And that's Correct. The if part. that's like, our thing, yeah. Unless it's all of us in or out, <laughs> there's no way. Jam, jam, dude. That's how I know that you're an adult. I I spent four hundred dollars on a microwave that I haven't mounted yet, and like all I can think is like I'm super stoked about this new microwave. Yeah, like well, <laughs> that's the problem with owning a house. I'm try, trying to figure out like th- so. By the way, there's links <clears throat> to, to some of the stuff that I talked about today. Um, they actually, oh, was that true? What I didn't know that. What the that uh the prices like spiked when everything switched to the euro in Europe. Was and the prices won't come back down. Was it I'm really not surprised. Yeah. But yeah, like overall, 
I think from what I've been hearing, a lot of like, especially well, a couple of months ago, we were hearing about people like, oh no, they're gonna take turn your, it. Turn your microphone up. Oh, is it that low? Allegedly. Really? Oh, sorry, man. That's what I've been told. But we'll yeah, make the background pink later. I'm putting it like really, really close now. Oh dang! Now I'm getting proximity effect from you talking like, oh, you're talking like sexy DJ now. Hey. Hey. Welcome um, to. Why is the background? Joe Mama Johnson. I don't know, man. <laughs> There's only one vote for pink, so that's what you get, Christian. Good, because I'm voting against it. Yeah, but no, like our market was hit hard, and I didn't realize it because I wasn't really focusing on bourbons back then. Dang, that was 2001. So, to that area. So, like, I am worried that the prices are going to stay that way. That's why I'm hoping that, like most people, are, what we've been hearing is they're going to take it for the next six months because they feel as though the tariff is going to go away, and it's more I likely mean, that's going to happen. I hope they get renegotiated and I hope they go away. Yeah. I really do. That's hopefully, but but at the same time. But then again, you get people people be like, "Oh crap, the twenty five percent is going to go away. Let's also, increase our price now, and then we'll pocket the change later." How much of a margin of profit is there in the McCallum Malik Number Six? I've never seen it for less than twenty eight hundred dollars. Master Malt has it without the box right now for twenty one hundred dollars. It might be like five hundred dollars. Total wine selling it for five hundred to a thousand dollars. Five hundred to a thousand dollars. I bet that's what it cost. You think that's what cost is? Yeah. Oh, the the level the, of anger. Think about that the MSRP, is... especially when sales prices go down, they usually do it at double markup, right? Uh, double cost. So it's probably $1,000. Wow. That's how most companies. I've, I've worked at three Fortune 500 companies, and that's how they do it. Yeah. So that's wow. how oh, that's how the companies I work. Sorry, I just had to throw that in there because on one hand, I know what I'm buying. I already know it is. But on the other hand, I'm like, it's, it's, why are these prices everywhere from two thousand to six thousand dollars? The great thing is that you know what you're buying, because if you bought it blind, how would you feel if it tastes like crap? I know what I'm buying because I've stolen two ounces of it and I've had three. He that, borrowed it that and he stolen. said it was okay. <laughs> Not the first time. But uh, the first time I went into a corner of the room and just stole an ounce. Uh, for you guys, what do you guys think? Do you think that uh, companies are going to start marking up the twenty five percent? We I haven't seen it in Oregon. I don't think Wally's seen it in uh, where he is. So, I haven't seen it. Um, just let us know if you guys have felt that. Um, my personal preference is like the great thing for me is I'm in my American single malt journey, so I'm following that. So it's not, I'm not gonna get targeted. But there are some like Springbank and so on that I do want to reach out for. But I'm hoping that it doesn't re- reach up in price. I'm telling you, I but got I'm on the whiskey exchange. So I got on the whiskey exchange and started throwing in a bunch of Springbanks that I've never seen on the shelf that I wanted to pick up. And then I went to go check out and I looked at the tariffs and I was like, I'm not doing it. But then I looked at like I, th- I think this is the year to really experiment with like foreign whiskeys because I was looking at McMira and everything else that was over there from other countries. None of it has a tariff, so I was like, "Man, like if you're trying to discourage me from ordering scotch and or and like really trying to encourage me to go buy some weird kinds of whiskeys from other places, this is doing it's it." Working, yeah. Well, yeah, it, it definitely affects us because like we all are involved. In yeah, it'll happen eventually. About, but um, yeah, no, it's 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 pretty crazy, like. I'm glad I'm hearing larger companies that can take like Brown Foreman and so on, like they import other stuff. And then if you have, I yeah, the Brown companies that are Brown diversified, Brown. I think they're going to be okay. But the companies yeah. that sell one thing, they sell scotch yeah. and America's yeah. maybe more than 30% because 30% is the average yeah. that we take from Scotland for single malts. But yeah. what if we're, what if America's like 50% of Dean's did you know, it's good. Well, I mean, it's going to hurt some of these companies real bad. Like a, is it space high distillery? I, I watched a little report on them. I think it was like a, maybe about two to five minutes. And they were talking about how they had a release, and they were going to release it in the U.S. this year, but the tariff stopped them from doing it. So they're actually going to focus wow. on the Asian market now, and then move more to blends. So that's a small <sighs> distillery that's doing well. If they, right. So we we talked about this before, and I think yeah. this is a great idea. I don't know why distilleries aren't doing this. Teaspoon, just teaspoon. Can't Sell your single it. malt, and for a period of time teaspoon it with something else in your portfolio yeah, and call that. it a blend and then sell it to America for the same thing. Give it a weird name like Wardhead or <laughs> or like all these other wacky names that we know for yeah. these other brands that already exist and just give it another well, name and then sell it to you us. You gotta think about it like they're probably thinking that this is gonna only gonna last six months. I mean I hope it only does you know I mean? but like, at the same time like mind, if it like, lasts. Yeah like let's because you think about it you have to develop a new brand you have to do all the LLCs yeah. that's a lot of work that's three to four months of just developing something to teaspoon. Yeah. And so, and that doesn't include like getting the labels done for America, and pass through the sucks? TGB. What if it's that? What if it's really good? And that teaspoon, everyone's like, I want that teaspoon. The the, the thing is, no. See, that's it. So that's what you do. 
if you sell that as a marketing ploy at the same time by teaspooning, you're going to create demand for it. Like there's a reason why we look out for Wardhead. There's yeah. a reason we look out well, for um, which one called Valve anyone. They're big companies, not. It does cost money, but I think that's to me that's a long term payoff. If okay. you can create a bottle of something and give it a funky name yep. today and it's like the teaspoon people will seek it when the tariffs go yep. away and everything goes back to normal people will be like oh remember that teaspoon bottle and people are gonna be like oh that was so good and then all of a sudden it's gonna be like no i mean pe- demand for is gonna me, go up for it that's awesome like, like for, for a consumer that makes sense but for a business it, it just it's too much for i, I mean you're creating certain. demand for a business yeah. that's what they do that's what they want to do they want to create demand like, if, if i'm a small independent bottler you know i want to do what maybe less than a hundred casks. Oh, you're talking about for IBs? Yeah. Like not independent, like just like a small distillery, like, like a tiny distillery that you never heard of outside of the UK. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's just too much money for them to invest in. And that's what they were saying. Like how they had uh, a private product. They did it for, I think it's spirit of space or something like that it was really well received. And they're like, okay, we need to go to the U S market. Cause that's the next biggest market. Right. And then the yeah. tariff just killed them because they couldn't make a profit. And it, yeah. no one knows your name. Like McAllen makes sense. Like okay, McAllen's an extra hundred dollars. If you're but that's if, what I'm saying. If you're like buying McAllen, you, yeah. you have money. If if it's a big name, yes, you could yeah. come up with like a fake other name. Hey, you're just saying. And Tolv, you're right. It's gonna hurt the small independent bottlers for sure. Like, Gregor's asking like, like, are you gonna change your spending habits? Like we already have. Like you yeah, have. unfortunately, I it's I didn't want to change my spending habits, but to be fair, like I already have a poop ton of bottles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, is it gonna stop me from really seeking out Spring Bank this year? Probably. Maybe if I don't see well, it on the shelf for good prices, then how about, I think I'm just gonna pass on it and yeah. come up with a new goal. This makes it even worse, right? The fact that importers are now not bringing those things in because it's too expensive. So that's, yeah, it's just it, everybody's getting hurt. Yeah. That's the, that's that's the the, importers that's don't what I'm even want to bring these like, brands anymore. Don't do anything for anybody; they just hurt everybody. The and where's the money gonna go? Nowhere. It doesn't no. go to anything. It goes to nothing. Goes and to, so everybody well, gets hurt. Goes to the money government. goes to nowhere. It goes to the government. So. Right, like I said, this is just spending it. It's a black hole. But yeah, no, like Gregor, it's it's already changed our spending habits. Um, I've known. I hate that that, that it's changed. I think Whiskey Advocate. If you guys look at the link below, I have a Whiskey Advocate um, uh, link for what um, some firsthand people. Uh, First talk subscription? About. No, no, just in general for people talking. Like they interviewed a bunch of um, distributors and, and stuff like that, and just understanding like they're not bringing certain brands anymore because it's not profitable. Yeah. Like, unless. Also, they, if you guys want to get Whiskey Advocate for really, really cheap, this is. We don't have a link for this. It's not affiliate. It's not a plug. Go to Amazon. I think I got a year subscription, which is like six or nine, nine issues for like 14 bucks. That's and it's bad. like the best deal that I could find. But yeah, so no, like. Just throwing it out there. I know where. people. And to be honest, like, they're probably one people, uh, one of the groups I go to for information about whiskey. So they really dive into it. So they have. Good yeah, because, we, because scotchwhiskey.com is dead. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I miss scotchwhiskey.com. It's well, such informative articles. It's so hard articles. to get that stuff going, man. Like, that's just, that's why Patreon helps us so much. So, yeah. But, Thank um, you, everybody. Yeah. Uh, pay for Star Trek. They have to pay for the Star Trek military, but I mean, we have space a Space Force now. Hey, man. We'll see. I know, I, I know it sounds stupid, but there's a point. Like, I've read some um, stuff where SpaceX is sending up too many satellites where um, meteorologists and stuff are cannot see the spa- uh, certain parts of space because of it now. They're too shiny. Because it's in the way? It's in the way, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever looked at the picture? So so you need a space force. So they're so small that, that it's not even funny anyways, like in the grand scheme yeah. of where it sits in space around the Earth. But there are pictures where people have enlarged the size of satellites yeah. so they can get a better idea. And it looks like we're surrounded by trash. Yeah. yeah. But the reality of it is like satellites are so small that it's not it's, it's not as bad it's as people are trying small, to make it look. It's the fact that they're so shiny. But they are in so the way, yeah. That they yeah, pop up in the way stars and... They get traces and it's not real. But anyway, yeah, that, that's why we send the expensive telescopes out to space. Yes. Hubble. But uh, yeah, no, Toby. Like, it is crazy how it has changed our spending habits right off the bat, and I have I haven't even seen that much affected by it. But it's making me think yeah. like maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it doesn't change my local spending habits, but it's definitely changed my online spending habits. Yeah. Like, quite a bit. have you guys stopped buying online? Let us know down below if you guys have stopped buying online or, or auctions, because I know auction sites are getting hit hard now. Yeah. So. I mean, we saw auctions recently that had McAllen in it that were super cheap, and I was like, "That's how's that possible?" Yeah, but it's making me wonder. But yeah, guys, um, a bunch of extra information if you guys want to read about it. Um, uh, get it. Or if you don't, it. we'll just do another episode. Tell us below. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, if you guys 
know any other episodes or anything that you guys want us to uh, talk about, uh, please let me let us know in the comments below. We'll send out an Instagram uh, blast on uh, Friday. You type in there, Christian, calm down. There's a lot of free messages for you. Thanks, bud. But uh, a lot of topics that we have to get through that for that one. So, um, yeah, photo time, photo time. Is it photo time? How's his new monitors, by the way? Good. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. These new in ear monitors? Ooh. With the six, man, with the six drivers on each side? With that little spice like a, bice at the end? Woo! Little rasp at the end. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, appreciate all the... Thank you support. all so much for tuning... Oh, wait, you were saying that. That's fine. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Um, yeah, let us know what the next topic... We're on. This is actually pretty fun. Um, I didn't realize how much stuff was going in through all the tariff stuff. So, you know, a couple hours today, just researching a bit more. It was actually pretty fun. So, appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for the... Um, recommendation Christian everything told i think you guys are the ones that uh asked about it so thank you yeah and thank you. on that note cheers jam dude i know what charles wants me to do right now i know what he wants me to do right now but i'm waiting because you guys are all saying it in the comments so i don't even have to say it deuces